Hello YouTube. Today I'm going to show you how to detect when the joystick has been flicked backwards or in today's instance over 125 degrees. Uh, for instance if someone were just holding forward and they wanted to flick back to say skid or do some kind of backflip. Uh, and this is my own personal project, so instead of doing it from scratch, I'm going to step through what I have already built. We'll be looking at this function here in my update event tick event. Uh, but before we get into this, I think it's important that we first understand the math behind what is going on. So when using a joystick, what essentially happens is you have a 2D vector for the player's input, where this point in the middle is the origin at 0, 0. The Y axis of the joystick refers to the Y, so this point would be 0, 1 means on the X this would be 1 0 and so on and so forth you would have the negatives so as you move the joystick around it varies inside this box here and since the joystick itself is a circle uh, you would typically think that it would be impossible for the values to go up to here but that is not always the case. It depends on from joystick to joystick, but most joysticks don't automatically restrict themselves to just this space. So what we'll end up doing is putting a clamp over it. When we clamp the input from to only accept values from negative one to one, we're essentially clamping our inputs on this inside of this circle which is exactly what we want when we're getting our values now one way that we could potentially detect the turnaround is to get the angles themselves this is not the way that I went with because I found a more simpler way but to explain this you can essentially track their input at any given point uh, and if you want it to be a true turnaround you would have a certain threshold so something like this say it's like 0.9 and what's past that you can track where their inputs are at right now so this is basically the direction of their joystick and this angle can be calculated and put into Unreal Engine through some nodes. And what you can do is wait a certain amount of time and detect if their joystick has an angle that is greater than or equal to your particular threshold for de detecting it. But the issue with this is rotations will be tracked on a 0 through 180 degrees um, basis. And what that means is the second you get past 180, instead of going to 181, it will turn into negative 180 or 179 whatever and there are ways around that but it's a little more complicated than we really need to go so I did not go with that and the second is when we dig a little deeper and that's when you look at the points themselves if we look at only the points of the joystick action there's no need to calculate any angle 
because all we'll really have to do to calculate is the distance between them. And if this distance is equal to a certain amount or greater than, uh, we know that it's within this angle because if you were to do it down here, well, this line is shorter than this line. So all you have to do is calculate what threshold you want for your turnaround angle. And these are the principles that we'll be working with today. It's also worth noting that when you use points, like I am here, uh, the wrong way to do it is to use the Pythagorean theorem to calculate this line here and use that to detect uh, your angles. Say if the line is equal to like you could you could add up both of these lines to see if it's over a certain amount uh, but that's the wrong way to do it because the player could simply press this direction twice in a row instead of actually turning around so it's a, a bit of a pitfall to avoid uh, let's head over to Unreal Engine So this is the entirety of my code in this project, but we're only going to be focusing inside this comment right here. This does all the magic. And again, this is in my event tick. So before we dive into the particulars of everything, uh, let's get an overview. It starts off with a sequence node, which Basically, first it will detect if the joystick is far enough. And if it is far enough, it will open a gate. And what this gate does is it will accept the incoming values uh, of the joystick. And the gate is only going to be open when the joystick is almost fully pressed or fully pressed. You can decide that for yourself and it will close when it is no longer fully pressed and after a duration of 0.1 seconds have passed. This is plenty of time, uh, a comfortable amount of time for people to do a flick movement. And then back to this sequence, it'll essentially just head right back into the gate itself to update it. And off of this first branch. It will essentially just detect when the gate has been closed and after it's been closed it will take the newest value that we have. So the, the current value after the 0.1 seconds has passed and it will use that value to detect if it has been long enough to be detected as a turnaround. So first off, how we actually detect if the joystick has been far enough. This node right here is for the enhanced input actions, the newer input system for Unreal Engine. It essentially just gets the X and the Y values of the joystick. And the way that I am detecting if it is greater than 0.9% uh, fully pressed out, so almost fully pressed out with some wiggle room, I am using the Pythagorean theorem. There. You take the square of each of these values and you add them up, and then you take the square root. So that's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We finally get to use it again. And I add my clamp, just like the circle over the grid, to make sure it stays within 0 and 1. 
And the reason this is not negative one here is because what I'm doing right here, instead of getting the point, I am getting the distance from the point to the origin of the joystick to zero, zero, just because we are simply detecting whether or not it has been pushed out all the way. It does not matter what direction it has been pushed out. And if it has indeed been pushed out far enough, this bool will be set to true. And this bool basically just detects whether the gate is open or closed. And this is a very important uh, for the rest of the logic down here that this bool exists. Because without this boolean, uh, the code that plays when the gate is closed will go off several times. And this is essentially a flag to just stop it from happening. Then after that sequence has gone off and the player is holding the joystick in a direction, say they're just running, uh, it will feed into the enter of the gate and it will constantly update the current frame vectors as long as the gate is open. So once again, we get the X and the Y values, except this time we are getting the individual point. So each individual value will be clamped between negative one to one, just as precautionary. And then I have a vector 2D that I will set using these values. And this vector 2D will basically represent the point that the joystick is currently at. Then right back here, when the player decides to do the flicking action, um, the joystick will no longer be within the 0 0.9 degrees that we need. So this will run towards false. So first we have a branch that is checking to make sure the gate is actually open because if the gate is closed, then that just means the player was running without flicking all the way, just running normally. And we don't want any of the code after to execute when that happens. And we have a new vector 2D variable here that basically takes the last current vector 2D from up here, this variable right here, and just stores it for now. I called it last frame vector because down here we will have a newest frame vector for the one we get after the delay uh, that we'll compare in a second. But this feeds into a sequence where first we close the gate and we set the boolean to off. And then immediately after, we wait the delay. And this is important because we need to close it right away before the delay or else this will continue to update uh, and affect our calculations down here. So after that delay has completed, and also uh, you will not need to use time.delta time for this duration because this node has that built in for the duration. So no need to worry about that. And now we have our third vector 2D variable for the newest, which is essentially the exact same as the code up here, except storing into a new variable. It will once again record what point the joystick is at after the delay. And after that, we will have a branch node that decides whether or not it is a turnaround. So what we do is we take the last frame vector and we subtract the newest one, that is this variable and this variable. And we subtract them. And then we use a vector 2D length node, which essentially is just the distance formula in one node, which is very nice and convenient. 
and it will give you the length between those two points as long as you have this uh, before it. And if the length is greater than or equal to the threshold, which I have set to 1.8, which I calculated to be roughly 130 degrees around there, uh, which works for me perfectly, but if the length is greater than that, it is detect detected as a turnaround. And then you'll want to reset the last frame and the newest frame afterwards, or else your future calculations will be quite messed up. And that about does it for the turnaround flick. Then you can use all the nodes you want inside your enhanced input action to decide what to do if it has been detected. So like instead of a print string, you could just have a boolean saying it has been turned around, right? And then you could do the turnaround action and then reset the boolean. Uh, I have not implemented that. So we just have this text up there that just says turn around. But, you know, it works like a charm. And it's not very performance heavy. There weren't any other videos about this, so I figured I would just make my own. But, yeah, thank you.